Greetings today from Botswana. I have rather a serious video for you. Uh, this is something a little bit unexpected. However, as you know, I started off early on. I was trying to build to the rapture correction warning and such. And as we looked at this, we anticipate that the next thing that we're looking for is the uh, revelation of the Antichrist. And that after the re revelation of the Antichrist, uh, then there will be the three and a half year uh, tribulation period uh, before the Lord returns. But leading up to the new world order uh, and the revelation of Antichrist or beast is going to be World War III. This is what we anticipate. Okay, I don't have any special word of knowledge or anything like that. I, I do have a measure of discernment as a gift from the Lord, uh, discernment of his word. But the biggest word I could give to you is watch. Just what Jesus said, and that is to watch. And so I'd like to alert you to some things going on. One of the things that caught my attention was just, it's just this uh, ongoing war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, so to speak. And I think I had gone over that a little bit before, but they're kind of holding on to it. There are some different things going on. And I can't tell you what the evil plan is. I think we've already shown how, you know, what you're being portrayed from the media is not, the, you know, the main media is not accurate. They're feeding you a lot of lies, like Putin is a dictator, he's crazy. Uh, sometimes they have fed you lies with, oh, Ukraine is beating Russia here and they're beating Russia there. Uh, one time I even saw a video with the headline that Russia was running out of ammunition. I think my wife had alerted me to it, and I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, never underestimate Russia. Russia's military is every bit on par with that of America's military. Uh, so anyway, we just want to look at this a little bit. Again, just having this in review, what I'm expecting, what I'm looking at, is that World War III will bring about the new world order and the beast or the Antichrist coming into power at a very key time. Uh, I ask that you would have patience with me. I have a number of things to go over and I just want to be able to share them. I don't know how well they will be ordered. Uh, I will have a link at the bottom of the page for the YouTube channel Redacted. They give a lot of good information seems to be he and she husband and wife seem to be on par with what is actually going on and not what the mainstream media keeps trying to feed us uh, as we know also uh, i have referred to albert pike and the three world wars now one of the things for this agenda is uh, albert pike was a freemason and a new and, a, and, and an illuminati uh, two groups noted for trying to take over the world. And one of their key elements is that they must destroy the old before they bring in the new. I've even had a person say, well, why should they bring the war? It doesn't make sense. They don't need that. But it does make sense to destroy the old before you bring in the new. I mean, you're really just trying to wipe away the resistance. And in a sense, you're also trying to point a finger saying, well, it's because of your old ways that this war came. Uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense, you know, as a Christian. But remember that Satan is a murderer from John 8, 44. Just Satan is a murderer. When Jesus has said that you are of your father, the devil, and, and your father's work you shall do. The first thing he said was he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not into the truth. Uh, abode not in the truth. And after that, he called him a liar and the father of it. And so it's no marvel that if these people want to destroy lives, uh, they are only emulating their father, the devil. Uh, we can see, I've, I've heard from a number of places of this worldwide agenda, that the ideal population for the earth, that is by the, the global elitists, is 500 million. That means they would have to kill about seven and a half billion people at this point to achieve that goal. 
And so you see, they would have no problem with these great wars. The Bible shows that, you know, if I am correct in my, in my looking at prophecy from Revelation 9, 13 through 19, it shows that in this war, one third of mankind will be killed. Uh, at this point, that would be over two and a half billion. And it seems to be indicating it will happen in an hour. So that is a, a nuclear war. We can see that such a thing would happen. It would bring devastation that we, we really can't imagine. But uh, I'm just trying to point out a few things going on right now as far as the Russia-Ukraine war, how things are being uh, led about uh, toward greater evil. Uh, another another uh, thing that you can look at again is the United Nations Agenda 2030. There has also been a plan in place to get these this situation of the New World Order implemented by 2030 or by the end of 2030, I'm not sure if it's the beginning or the end, uh, but it does appear that the Lord is not going to allow this uh, to fully take place. Um, I want to introduce this idea to you also. Uh, there is a government within the government. Now we talk about the plan, that there is a plan of those with the new world order. There's a plan because there are operatives working for what I, I just call world government. I mean, it's world government behind the scenes. It is sometimes called the deep state. Other times it is called shadow government. And that would be operatives like within every nation, high level operatives, presidents, uh, that are actually working for these groups, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the, through the different groups uh, to carry out their agenda. Whatever it is they want, they will do. And so, I mean, you can really see that in places, say like with uh, the Clinton administration, the United States, back in the 1990s, it was the Clinton administration that gave China satellite technology. And within, I think it was like three or four months, China boasted that they then had a ballistic missile that could hit the United States. So you see, they're all playing, playing it together. China had to be elevated, okay? And the U.S. had to be lowered because as you remember in the early 1990s, the Soviet Union collapsed and there was only one superpower left and that was America. But you have to remember this about destroying the old and bringing in the new. There can be no strong nations left. There can't be a strong nation left to oppose things and stand on its own. It has to be that all the countries really need one another or they can't make it. And so in this way, what I see in World War III, though some may say, you know, some would say, well, I think America is superior. Others would say, well, I don't know. China is pretty, pretty strong. They're coming on. I myself don't see that any nation, well, you can't win a nuclear war anyway. But I don't see that there will be any particularly strong nations left. There will still be nations that the world government uses, but everyone has to be brought pretty low and onto an even playing field. That's the way I see it. And so I'm introducing this idea of the deep state shadow government on, on my channel here. Not that it is, it is new. I mean, this has been around, been talked about like this for, for decades. I'm not even sure how long. Uh, you have to remember also that this central banking system is how the Illuminati and Freemasons have taken over the world. Uh, sometimes there is a, I think there is a book called uh, The Council of 300. It's about how 300 wealthy families truly control the world through this central banking system. They are the ones that create depressions, they start wars, they also will tell you, because they control the media, they will tell you when there's a dread disease that you have to stay hidden in your home for and let them do some needlework on you. They will tell you that too. The, the uh, leaders of the world are under their control also. It all comes down to money. Remember that the love of money is the root of all evil. And these are in power and they have a lot of money. And those also working for them uh, will be seduced by money. Remember, I'm saying it is not 300 people, but 300 families. 
of people. And that could be a very, very broad range. You know, if you get down into uh, cousins, second cousins, nieces, great grandparents, I mean, you have no idea. But even so, it would be relatively few compared to the a country's population, let alone anything else. Uh, what you see from presidents in America, you also see that they will be part of one of these groups, if not all three, that is the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, and the Bilderberger Group. Now, the Bilderberger Group, that's the group that controls the media, and they control it worldwide. It's not just in America, but it's everywhere. Uh, thankfully, we still have a good bit of access over the Internet to, uh, to getting the truth, but you have to dig for it. But when you see station after station after station just reporting the same things, Russia's getting beaten on, in Ukraine. Oh, Russia's running out of bullets. Oh, Putin is like Hitler. You, know, you see, when you see station after station after station reporting this, you know they have been given an agenda from who is in charge of them. And that's how you have to dig for the truth. As we know with the Russia-Ukraine war, we know that America toppled the, toppled the government in Ukraine in 2014. And since that time, it has been building. It's been building up NATO and it has wanted to make Ukraine a member of NATO and to put arms in Ukraine so that it would be in striking distance, distance short striking distance of Moscow. And this is the thing that Russia really opposed. They saw it coming. They've been opposing it for years. And America has just kept pressing ahead with it. There were other factors involved, too. There was uh, ethnic cleansing that, uh, was it Zelensky? Zelensky was carrying out in Ukraine against Russian natives. And so uh, when Putin went in there, he was really, he was defending Russia's interests and also he was preventing a genocide in eastern Ukraine. However, the media, the mainstream media, portrays it like, oh, he's just, he's just a, a dictator wanting to do this. And of course, Putin is a lot smarter than that. And you can't get away with such a thing in the, our globally interlocked world today. I mean, we just, we just can't. Some of these things with the Russia-Ukraine war, okay, I just reviewed the underlying, underlying cause, is uh, we look at it somewhat, why would Russia use old weapons? Now, it seems to be reliable that Russia, you know, did not blitzkrieg in Ukraine. Now, there were reasons for that. Some of the reasons are because they didn't want to kill their own nationals in eastern Ukraine. They were trying to save them. And they really didn't want to destroy everything. But they wanted to get this buffer zone. They wanted to disrupt the plans to put weapons in Ukraine and such like that. Uh, and so they used a lot of World War II tanks, a lot of different armaments. They have begun to use a few new weapons like hypersonic missiles and such. But when you are in a war, okay, uh, in Sun Tzu, he's a Chinese philosopher uh, from old China, like maybe 500 BC or something. I'm not sure of the year. I have the book Sun Tzu, The Art of War, that all warfare is based on deception. And when you are strong, make the enemy think you are weak. When you are weak, make him think you are strong. It's all about deception. And this is what Russia has done to an extent. They have had plenty of strength to achieve their objectives in Ukraine without using their best weapons. And that's so that America won't know what Russia has up its sleeve uh, when the time comes for the greater war. And instead, Russia has been carefully, uh, they've been intercepting, I don't know how to say it. They have been monitoring all the things that America and its allies do. They have been funneling the information to China also. China and Russia are allies and they are in it together. And this is also, also always, uh, this will ultimately uh, come, to, come to play when Russia and China attack America. They're getting information. And so it only plays into their hands to draw it out a little bit. Uh, there are other things, though, that are truly, um, 
We're really seeing a division in the world coming because of this war. Not everyone is against Russia for invading Ukraine. Not nearly everyone. Many, of course, they know exactly what's been going on. But they already have good relations with Russia, and they don't want things to change. Here in Africa, uh, Africa supports Russia, and they support China. I have found out that of the 57 nations in Africa, there is only one nation, a small one, Swaziland, that will recognize Taiwan as an independent nation. All the others tell China, no, we think Taiwan is a part of you. Remember, that's another flashpoint that we're looking at, China taking over Taiwan. And so all of Africa is behind China with this. China demands political loyalty when it gives you something. And uh, so Africa is in support of Russia and China. Uh, African nations also did not vote. They abstained from voting in the United Nations when it came to condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. They wouldn't do it. And so you can see that it's not so lopsided as you might think. Maybe America and Europe uh, are ganging up, maybe even Australia ganging up in their opinions, uh, broadcast opinions of Russia, but that is not the case worldwide. What we're seeing is the division of the world, and this is a key division. In case you do not know, I mean, since 1971, uh, the world has been run by what they call the petrodollar. In 1971, uh, America arranged, because we had a lot of debt, we arranged at a global meeting that we would take the world off the gold standard. That is, gold would be the underlying reserve currency of every, of every you know, dollar bill or yuan or euro or whatever it would be. It would be the U.S. dollar from then on would be the reserve currency of the world. But there had to be something to back it. And we didn't use gold because we didn't have enough gold anyway. And so we just, so it was arranged that oil would be the uh, commodity that would be underlying the reserve currency of the dollar. Since then, it's been called the petrodollar. And wherever you would go in the world, if you were buying oil in Saudi Arabia or in Russia or wherever you would buy it, Venezuela, you'd have to pay for it in American dollars. This has given the American people a great edge in gasoline prices and such. There's a lot more to this than that. Uh, strictly speaking, America is the largest oil producer in the world, and we have more than enough oil to take care of ourselves. But it was arranged through treaty that the American oil companies would not sell to America. It would just be overseas. And even though that treaty has run out, the practice still continues and it puts the American people in even greater hardship, unfortunately. Uh, so the petrodollar has been controlling the world in this way. And that is why people can buy gold before 1971. 19, it was like 1936, I believe, the U.S. government had confiscated the gold. And then they put it back on, on the market when the U.S. went off the gold standard. Uh, this is a a thing for which the world is now rebelling. It is coming out from under the thumb of the petrodollar. And this is why you see things like these BRICS, the, the BRICS nations. Things are really progressing to have a division between those that depend on the US dollar as reserve currency and those that depend on the, the yuan, the Chinese. That, that was uh, beginning to be offered in 2018 and it's coming into place, but really pretty much every nation is, is able to use their own currency, but now they, they are kind of stepping out. And let me tell you why they're stepping out. Okay, they're stepping out because America is a bully, all right? <laughs> if you don't go with the petrodollar, America will attack you, like we did with Libya, like we did with Iraq. Those were the underlying reasons. Please don't think any of the other contrived reasons. Oh, oh, there is uh, Al Qaeda, you know, working all these terrible things in Libya against the people, and, and uh, Gaddafi is behind it. Or oh, there's weapons of mass destruction. Don't believe it. It was all about the petrodollar and money, and because those countries were refusing to go along with the system, 
and they were taken out. The problem is with Russia, you don't just take out Russia like you took out Libya or, or Iraq. Uh, unfortunately, millions of lives have been destroyed. But you can see this. You can see that the United States has become a great military empire. Uh, I was told through this site, Redacted, that currently there is U.S. military in 159 countries around the world. The last I had known a couple years before, it was 132. Now it is 159. There's only about 200 countries in the world. If that's not an empire, I don't know what is. There, are also, there was also a tally of 750 U.S. military bases offshore around the world. Now, some of these bases are very small. They're more or less just small landing strips, maybe for supplies, but the number is 750. And so you can see this is a big breach. And we see things like this organization of the BRICS nation, uh, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. This is all part of the Belt and Road Initiative done by China, which is a, a source of trading around the world. You can see this like Brazil, South Africa, uh, China. You can see how the, the dots are, are kind of connected country to country. And it is these BRICS, BRICS nations that have definitely made a break uh, with the petrodollar, or they are in the process of breaking right now. And this is going to lead to war. It's not going to happen quietly. Unfortunately, this is, you know, America is not going to go down per se without a fight, even though we have been destroying nations around the world, you know, for over a hundred years. There was another uh, article I saw on a site saying, how, and I know it's true, documenting that in Latin America alone, we've overthrown 41 governments in like about 120 years, since like 1890 something. And it's absolutely true. And it makes me ashamed uh, to be an American. And so you see these BRICS nations are in the process of truly breaking with the petrodollar. And again, don't forget Iraq and Libya, they were not destroyed for any humanitarian uh, reasons or anything like that. Uh, so it's shifting. So I also just wanted to tell you, of course, this is a war we've said if it is following this from, from, uh, from Revelation chapter 9, uh, that it's going to destroy over two and a half billion people really quickly. Now, I don't know when this war will be. Again, I say that if things fell in order biblically, uh, it would not quite be time yet. And that is there's an order of seven trumpets going on in Revelation 8 and 9. And this war would be uh, the sixth trumpet. And so we still are not seeing some other trumpets here. But I can't tell you with certainty if those trumpets will fall in order. I think they will, but I'm not sure. We need to watch and be ready. You need to know that China is in position to invade the United States. Okay, they, have, they are set up in North America and in the islands off like the Bahamas very much in control economically and such in the Bahamas. They have been going around more or less making treaties around the world, positioning themselves, because even from 1949, uh, from when they first became a communist nation, they openly stated how they wanted to replace America as the leading power in the world. Unfortunately, it's all going to go down with the war. Um, I do not see I mean, if it's billions of people dying, then that has to happen in Asia. I mean, it, it will happen in, in North America also, but even with Canada, America, and Mexico, that's only about maybe 400 million people. And so you can't get two and a half billion unless you're hitting the population centers, which are in Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, and such like that. I just also wanted to share with you this interesting piece of information. Uh, I wish I could remember where I got it, because this is old information. I mean, this is like from four years ago. There is a U.S. company named Daigle, D-E-A-G-E-L, Daigle Corporation, I believe. And they make military-grade 
equipment. They are a contractor for the U.S. Air Force. As a part of their services, what they do is every year, and they may have even revised this since, since then. You won't find it on their website. There is a website. This is leaked information. But as a part of what they do, they do a census. They survey the population uh, for what it is, and they make a prediction for what it will be. Okay. And so for over a period of three years, they were doing the survey in America, and each year the population was growing by 3 million people, just under 1%. Not a, a, doesn't include illegal uh, immigrants, of course, but just under 1% is growing. Okay. But in each, in each census, they had the projected number of people for the year 2025. And I'll only tell you the last one. The numbers are not good. You would think by this, by this time, right now, America has about 340 million people. If things proceeded this way, you'd say, oh, 350 million, right? 2025? No. What they said would be 100 million. That the population of America would be cut by like 70% or so. Why did they do this? One Army intelligence officer pointed out, he said, these people weren't taking an idle guess. They know something. Now, Daigle on their site said, well, it could be because of uh, disease. It could be because of war. It could be because of economy, things like that. But understand that these sources in the world are taking it seriously. This isn't just doomsayers from the Bible or anything like that. And what I've tried to give you today is things that aren't exclusively biblical. I have a few Bible references down here. Uh, for example, in Luke 21, 22, Jesus says that these will be the days of vengeance, vengeance upon the wicked. And in Psalm 17, 13, we are shown that he uses the wicked as his sword. And that would certainly be going on here. So I just want you to have a heads up uh, for what I think is going on. If we get out of this war with Ukraine and Russia and World War III has not hit, and I am praying that it won't, but it will, it will still divide the world. During the last, ever since uh, President uh, Trump, uh, before he was elected even, uh, his presidency and his candidacy divided America. It wasn't per se of anything that he did. This is a plan. It was a plan to divide America and to make it fall. And now we're seeing a plan to divide the world. And it will fall. So this is a serious time. God's word is always true and his promises are true. So more than ever, use it as a time to enhance your relationship uh, with the creator. Uh, God's word is true. Uh, he is not a liar. And soon we will be with him. Watch. Please watch, as Jesus says, and don't take these don't take these warnings lightly. He doesn't want you to. He doesn't want you to worry, but he wants you to live in truth. May God bless.